praise the name of the Lord. We thank God for this beautiful Saturday the Lord has given unto us that we may hear the word of God. This is the word that transforms our lives. It is the word that brings power. It is the word that brings hope unto us. It is the only one that we have surety for eternity. My name is Lefe Daniel Jordan Moraya from the Cities of Refuge Ministries. May God literally bless you even as you hear the word of God. Today, I just want to check about our commitment. Our commitment. Not our commitment to anything, but our commitment to our Creator. Our commitment to God. The question we have to ask ourselves, do we evaluate or regularly evaluate our commitment? You are going to realize if you have been in school that every end of the term or a semester, you find that the lecturer or the teacher will evaluate your, uh, your performance. Whether you have been just be attending the class or maybe you have not been getting anything. And it is also paramount to evaluate our work with God. It is important to take stock. It is important to evaluate what is happening in our spiritual life. Just the same way with the family, the same way with the education, the same way with the investment, the same way with our businesses. We must evaluate our ways with God and more so our commitment with God. Above everything is to realize that our commitment is easily threatened by the things that are happen around us. When you look to the life of Jesus Christ, he could preach to so many people. You're going to find that there's someone on the mountain and that he was not calling people to respond to faith only, but also to respond with a commitment. You are going to realize that Jesus Christ does not speak to us only for our faith or our only just uh, immediate response, but it is our commitment. Do you remember the word of Joseph said, for me and my house, I have decided, for me and my house, I will serve the Lord, is a commitment you made together with the family. Let us see what does the word of God says in regard to a commitment to God. We are going to go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 35, and we are going to read a long scripture, but I know this is going to help us. The Bible says, starting from verse 1, this is the word that uh, came to Jeremiah from the Lord during the reign of Joachim, son of Josiah, king of Judah. Go to the Rechabites uh, family and invite them to come to one of the side rooms of the house of the Lord and give them wine to drink. So I went to get Jehazaniah, son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazaniah, and his brothers and all his sons, the whole family of the Rechabites. I brought them uh, into the house of the Lord, into the room of the sons of Hanan, son of Gedaliah, the man of God. It was next uh, to the room of the officials, which was uh, offered the Manasseh, son of Shalom, the doorkeeper. Then I set the bowls full of wine and some cup before the Lechabites and said to them, Drink some wine. But they replied, We don't drink wine, because our forefathers, Joandam, son of Rechab, gave us this command, Neither you nor your descendant must ever drink wine. And also, you must never build houses and sow seed or plant vineyard. You must never have uh, any of these things, but always live in the tents. Then you will live a long time in the land where you are nomads. We have obeyed, we have obeyed everything our forefather Johanadab, son of Rechab, commanded us. Neither we, nor our wives, nor our sons and daughter have ever drunk wine or built houses to live in or have any a field or a crop. We live in tent and have fully obeyed everything our father Johanadab, Johanadab commanded us. But when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, invaded this land, we said, Come, we must go to Jerusalem to escape the Babylonian and Aramean army. So we have remained in Jerusalem. That is the word of God. That is the word of God. It's hard, but very, very challenging story and a reality that Jeremiah was surprised when he was sent to the Rechabites. And God, if you read the whole of the scenario, you are going now to see God challenging the house of Judah and telling them that they see what the Rechabites, they have obeyed their forefather for over 200 years. How much more about me? You have not been obeying me. 
This is people who had committed themselves to their tradition. You are going to realize currently in our country, Kenya, that majority of people are recommitting themselves to the traditions. One of the going to realize maybe is about maybe negotiations, maybe it is about maybe other sacrifices. They, they are committing themselves. And God is asking our, uh, us a question. If we can be committed to the elderly or to the commands of men, how much more should we commit ourselves to the commandment of Almighty God so that we can have eternal life with us? This is a challenging uh, uh, scriptures. My brother, my sister, the Lord our God he is holy and he is mighty. At the same time, the Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 20 that the Lord is a jealous God. And this God being jealous, he is asking for us an unwavering commitment. He is asking us not to be partially committed to the kingdom matters or even to our work with him. We can see that the Kabbalists were committed to their forefathers' uh, word for over 200 years and they were spoken once. The Lechabite, he did not speak again and again. But you're going to see God speaking to the house of Judah again and again, telling them, stop evil, stop doing what you are doing so that you can live. But the Judah, yeah, they could hear none of it. You can see that the house of Judah were a rebellious house. But when it comes to our life, you are going to be amazed. The word of God will be coming to us again and again. The word of God is calling us maybe to live a, a pure life. He is calling us maybe to give ourselves fully to the kingdom matters. God is calling us into the life of prayers, maybe of fasting. God is calling us to sacrifice our resources for the kingdom. God is calling us to witness and to obey the great commission. God is calling us to do many things. And these things, he is reminding us again and again. It is not one time, it is not just the second time, but it is continuous way the Lord God is calling us to turn to his ways. But the Bible says that the house of Lechabite, they obeyed uh, their father and God blessed them. But God said the house of Judah have not obeyed his word and therefore they are going to be charged. And this is the same way with the time we are living in. We have become so much committed to our father's traditions. When we are thinking about negotiations and even things about dowries, majority of us when they get sick, they always turn and ask themselves, perhaps I have not obeyed the word of my forefathers. Maybe I have not, my mother disobeyed maybe the traditions. And they, we are very quick and desiring to know what maybe our father said. We are very quick maybe even to go and take dowry, to go and take what we call a boozy. We are so willing to go and call on many people and maybe a situation whereby we are calling our friends so that we can go and fulfill the one that our forefathers did. And this allows the jealousy God. If you can obey the word of men, if you can obey the word of your grandfather, I was with a man who was pursuing certain uh, investment. And when I asked him why is he pursuing with such a zeal, he told me that his father, before he died, he said that none of his investment need to get lost. And this man told me, I am pursuing this because my father said so. And he told me, I am willing to use of one million or whichever amount so that I can be able to reclaim the land that is belong to my father. This is man he is not born again, but he is willing to use millions, he is willing to use any other means so that he can obey the word of the father who is already dead. But in a mysterious way, the God who is internal, the God who is invariable, the invariable word of God that we are not willing to obey. And therefore, God uh, anger and God jealousy is allowed. And this is why God is calling us this day. Are you evaluating your commitment before God? Can you be able to evaluate your dedication to the kingdom matters? This is God who will judge both the living and the dead. This is God whom he gave you bread and to our bread shall return unto. And therefore, we must evaluate our plans, we must evaluate our times, we must evaluate our priorities so that we may not become like the house of Judah. 
And God compared us with the people who value traditions. The people who value traditions, they are committing to their traditions. They are willing to skip the Sunday services. They are willing maybe even to go and take a loan. They are willing to go and consult the elderly. They are willing to go and dig the history of their families so that in their family they can be able to obey everything that their forefather spoke. How, How much more should we obey the father of our spirit and so that we can live? This is amazing that the majority of us, we are committing ourselves to the things which are temporal. We are committing ourselves to the variables and the things which are not internal, they are temporal. And we are willing to dedicate our life, we are willing to dedicate our resources, we are willing to dedicate our every minute to the things that were spoken by our forefathers. But how are we obeying to the Father of our spirit? The Lord God who gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. How many are we that we are willing to say like Joshua? For me and my house, I have made a commitment and have made a vow I will serve my God. For me and my resources, I will serve the Lord. For me and my body, I will not go astray. And this is a call to evaluate our priorities. This is our call to evaluate our commitment. If maybe there is an occasion, maybe in your home, that is looking maybe to bring our house together, majority of us are not saying it is bad to go. But you are going to find that we can be able to go and maybe borrow money, borrow fare, borrow maybe money to contribute to that. But when it comes to the kingdom matters and the things that the Lord giver of life, he is calling us to commit ourselves to them, we are very lax. And at the same time, we complain and we always find it is not important to give ourselves to them. My dear listener, the Lord our God, he is the Lord. He is the Lord of all the visible and invisible. And he is challenging us that we need to give him a priority in our life. We need to evaluate our commitment. We need to, ever to make up our mind that we are not going to turn back. We must make a commitment that what we have decided to follow and to serve the Lord, we are not going to turn back. Uh, this is a challenge. This is a call. The house of Rechabites, they are encouraging us. How are you going to respond? And even when you hear this word, how are you going to respond to those who are not born again? Are you giving your life to Jesus Christ? Are you going to obey your fathers and you miss to obey your heavenly father who is able to do more than you can imagine? Who is able to, uh, to destroy your life and even condemn you to eternity? This is a challenge to you. Evaluate your commitment to the almighty God. Evaluate your commitment to the giver of life. Evaluate your commitment to the one who is able to do more than you can imagine. May God bless you. May God favor you. May God establish you. And may God help you to weigh yourself and to weigh your options on the scale and know where your commitment lies and where your priorities are. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for your word. We pray Jehovah King of Glory, even as we go to evaluate our commitments, my God, help us that we shall not be challenged by the Lechabites or the people who are obeying African traditions. And my Father Jehovah King of Glory, they are willing not to follow you, for my God Father at the expense, my Father, of, of, of their work with you. Help us that we shall give a first priority in our life, and Father, you shall perfect that which concerns us. In Christ Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. May God should bless you. May we continue to evaluate our, our commitment. If you desire to get more of our messages, you can go to our Facebook, that is Com Chapel, and uh, go like it and follow us. You are going to get these messages. You can also go to YouTube, Com Chapel, and you are going to get our messages, and God is going to bless you. Also, remember, every Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., we have Liberating Truth in yeah. Truth FM. Uh, listen, uh, tag a friend, and listen to the one that is going to liberate you and the one that is being unfolded and you shall no longer live in a simple way. God bless you, God favor you, and God establish you. In Jesus' name, I do pray for grace upon you. Amen. Amen.